Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Miami, Florida by Eddie Rodriguez. How are you doing, Eddie? I'm good, John. How are you? Yeah, and Eddie has worked with hundreds of people looking to build financial independence and freedom, building real uh, real wealth and looking to be the boss rather than making money for the boss. So Fran we're going to talk about franchise ownership, which mitigates risk far greater than startups and comes with tremendous support. So it's a great, obviously, Eddie, it's a great transition between traditional employment and, and business ownership. And that, that's what we're going to talk today about the benefits of a franchise over an independent business ownership. So I guess to, to start with, Eddie, I think people, I think people know their, you know, some know the names of some franchises and all of that, but I don't think people really understand the breadth and depth of the different types of franchises you can get into. So maybe just give an overview of the franchise market itself. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, but most I've been doing this for 17 years and I find it really comical that still to this day, most people think of franchises as food, you know, it's, yeah. it's uh, whether it's McDonald's or Subway or one of the pizza franchises, um, people associate franchises with food. Uh, franchises exist in any and every industry you possibly can imagine. Our portfolio has over 540 of the best franchises in the country. They exist in construction, wellness, CBD, pet care, uh, travel. I can go on and on. You name an industry, there's a franchise in it. The primary mm -hmm. difference, John, between a startup, and I've been a serial entrepreneur. I have created and built four businesses in my lifetime. The primary business difference between a startup and a franchise is besides they exist in any kind of industry, in any sector, in any type, is they've already been created. They're established. They have been validated. There are other owners succeeding in it versus you and I starting a business from scratch. We think we have a great idea. Only about 17%, one, 7% of those are still around two years from now versus over 80% of franchises that open today generally are still around eight to 10 years later, mm -hmm. just because they've been perfected. They come yeah. with tremendous support, technology support, marketing support, operating support. So I often like to say, kind of cliched, but that you're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. Right, um, right. So. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a great point. And as somebody who were, I worked uh, at New Horizons Computer Learning Centers back in the day, I worked at the franchise or so I saw from the other side. Uh, and I think it's also interesting from people that for people is that you, you can have a franchise in a particular, you know, niche or whatever, but you can have a small one, you can have a big one, you can have buy multiple ones. I mean, when I was a, a, at New Horizons, like you'd some people who had like multiple centers and had kind of an empire. And then you had people who had little centers in, in, in small towns. Yeah, that's very, very true. I, I often like to make the joke that my clients are like the old Forrest Gump movie when he sits on the bench and says, life is like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. I feel my clients are the same. They're all different. You never know what you're going to get. So I had a client just last week that said, Eddie, I need to get out of the house. Retired guy. Um, my wife is asking me to move tomato sauce cans from one cabinet to the other. Uh, please find me something to do. He loves dogs. So I'm working with him on a pet care franchise where he can be surrounded by the kind of life that, that he loves. Mm -hmm. And then, like you just said, there are people that are real empire builders that, that want to, I'm working with a gentleman right now that wants to package multiple brands in the health and wellness space for his market so he can cross market between brands um, um, to build a, a bigger business into multiple territories. So um, what we do is listen to what people want to do and how we can best help them identify what might be a best fit for them, whether it's one small franchise to get you out of the house or if you really want to build a big, big empire in your market. 
So what are some of the what are some of the things that you should consider if you're thinking about getting into franchising? I mean, what are what are some of the things you should consider initially? Well, what, one of the things that I tell people that they must embrace is the idea that because the franchise company has already been created and established, you must follow a system. They have a protocol. They, they know how the system works to give you your best opportunity to succeed. All, all ownership opportunities, all entrepreneurial opportunities come with risk. Mm -hmm. Franchises are no different. People think that you can just turn on a light switch when you buy a franchise and money's going to come pouring in. That's not true. You have to work hard. But for those people that want to start a business and want to do everything exactly as they want to do it, franchising is not right for them. Mm -hmm. If you want to be involved in a business that you can own and build in your market that's already been established and comes with a template for success, then, then it warrants your exploring. But if you want to do something entirely on your own and, and do things exactly as you want, franchising is not for you. Yeah. No, I think those are those are excellent points because, uh, as you said, I mean, sometimes people are looking, especially nowadays, looking for this silver bullet, this turnkey solution that's just going to do everything for them. But as you said, when you're considering a franchise and whatever franchise that is, you need to consider how much time effort you're willing to put into it. And as you said, are you willing to follow the process and and i guess eddie probably one of the things and it's the same it's true with anything whether it's your own business or not is things tend to take a little bit longer than you would like so you have to have that that patience too right yeah i, I often talk to people that have an erroneous expectation that they invest in a franchise and they're making money in a week mm -hmm. um i i often tell them you need to forecast, you need to do a pro forma for your business and have working capital in there for at least six to 12 months. You need to build your book of business just because it's a franchise that might grant you a, a slightly easier path because the company's going to train you. They're going to explain how you best operate the business. They're going to help you with marketing, perhaps even with staffing and training. But you got to work hard and you, you, you know, it takes time to build any business. Franchises are no different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I guess then, um, you know, people watching here uh, probably are wondering, okay, so it sounds, franchising sounds interesting, but isn't the initial franchise fees and the training fees and getting up and running, those can be exorbitant, right? Uh, but the reality is it's a, it's a spectrum like everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 listen, there's two costs associated with franchise ownership. One is that franchise fee you just mentioned. It's a one-time fee for the life of the franchise agreement. Generally, they run people anywhere from forty to $60,000, give or take. But like any business, whether it's your business, my business, or McDonald's, you have operating costs when you launch your business. Um, and, and you have to budget for that. And I, I tell people that you know, there are certain businesses, franchises or otherwise, that cash flow sooner, mm -hmm. that require less of an investment, perhaps that require less or more employees. Um, all franchises are different, like any business. So the key is for people to really look hard in the mirror. And I have a document that I send to clients that shows them the four different types of franchise ownership and brands that pertain to each, and then in bullet point format, what each one requires, I tell them, look in the mirror, ask yourself, what kind of life do you want? Mm. What kind of business do you want to build within that life before you start thinking, oh, I want a sports franchise. Oh, I want a hamburger franchise. What type of business do you want to be involved in? Mm -hmm. So those that do the diligence process properly, whether it's my clients or otherwise, are ones that really do a lot of research, talk to other owners in the system so they can validate. I tell my clients, talk to other owners before you invest, ask them, mm -hmm. would you do it again? You know, and, and is the company, you know, supporting you as advertised? So there is a way for people to really research franchise ownership that is certainly more thorough and more transparent 
than buying from a private business owner. Yeah. And and I guess, it, as you said, when you're looking in the mirror saying what kind of franchise you want, what kind of life do you want? I guess the other part is like, how how much do you want to be involved? Like, is this something where you're going to be 100% involved for a long time? Or are you looking for something that you can ease yourself out of? Or So, I mean, I, I guess these are other questions as well. Yeah, that's an excellent point, John. We, we, we work with people. We, we have various types of franchise ownership. One is the owner operator. I call that the, the cook and the bottle washer in a restaurant where you are in there full on, you know, uh, um, operating the business day in, day out. There's semi absentee opportunities where a franchise company only requires you to maybe devote 15, maybe 20 hours a week on not in your business so that you can i don't know really do something else even if that's playing golf however mm -hmm. those semi-absentee more passive opportunities will cost you more money because you have to hire a manager to run the day-to-day -day operations and report to you but to my earlier point that's a lifestyle choice what kind of life do you mm -hmm. want do you want to be that owner operator? And it's really a balance between time and money. If you have a lot of, a lot of money, but not a lot of time, maybe semi-absentee makes more, more sense to you. If you have a lot more time, but less money, you might want to opt for the owner operator yeah and then i mean i guess because we have the changing landscape of business right now especially retail you know businesses so i mean there there seems to be more opportunity than ever for service-based business or businesses that require you know, you know that you can't really do online that you need to do in person and it seems to me that it's uh that there's a lot of opportunities in that now because um you know retail space is becoming available in the way that it never was before yeah, listen, the pandemic changed the world. It, it, franchises were no different. During and after the pandemic, to your point, a lot of what we call essential service businesses flourished. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a fire or a flood in your business or your home, you got to get that fixed. That's an essential service business. Mm -hmm. um, there are others like it. You know, some businesses during the pandemic didn't fare so well. Gyms. Uh, you know, at most brick and mortar opportunities, food businesses, but those are coming back. A lot mm -hmm. of people had pent up demand, wanted to get back to the gyms. Restaurants in Miami are packed. So it, it really goes back to, again, what kind of business do you want to build? What kind of life do you want to live? Um, do you want an essential service business, for example, that you can operate out of a home office? Mm -hmm and not have to have a brick and mortar location. Right. So it really depends a lot even on people's passion. I often mm -hmm. tell people, I have your resume, thank you, but let's talk about what you want to do next in your life. Do you want to channel your experience into a life passion or do you want me to stay focused just on what your resume tells me? So I keep going back to that point because I do think yeah. it matters a lot. Yeah, I mean, because clearly something that you're passionate about, you're going to, in, you know, invest more time and energy in that than something that maybe, maybe turns out to be not really what you expected, because you didn't really do enough research in the first place, or you thought that it sounded good. But the reality is, is very different for you. Um, just, just out of interest, um, c can you give us examples of maybe a couple of, of franchises that are more unusual or that people maybe wouldn't spring to people's minds initially? Oh, wow. We have so many of those. I presented one this morning that's in the business, in the construction service business. And this particular franchise is in the saving money business for, for their clients. For example, a general contractor that renovates a home or builds a home or a business, uh, certainly in Florida where I live, you have to have a dumpster where the 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 workers dump all the refuse and mm -hmm. you know stuff that they need to throw out into that dumpster well every time the general contractor has to replace the dumpster he gets a 500 hundred dollar bill this one company has a a a an amazing concept where um at the end of the evening a little truck comes by with a hydraulic arm and crushes literally pulverizes all that garbage into dust 
So the next day, you don't have to replace that mm -hmm. dumpster. So what did you just do? You're selling savings. So yeah. that's an interesting and disruptive business model. Um, physical therapy franchise that I'm, I'm having a lot of success with right now. A lot of physical therapists around the country. You can find a physical therapist anywhere. This one also focuses on balance issues. Over 70% of Americans at one point or another in their life suffer from balance issues, whether it's vertigo or all, uh, otherwise. Well, this particular uh, healthcare franchise not only is a state-of-the-art physical therapy um, office, but they are specialists in working with people that have balance issues. So that's a unique physical therapy, uh, health and wellness opportunity. And as I said, there are so many, John, in so mm -hmm. many different sectors that are disruptive, be it food or, like I said earlier, yeah. CBD, which continues to be booming around the country. Those people that actually sell high quality yeah. seed to shelf, you know, products that actually work. Uh, we work with a brand that does uh, a phenomenal job. I placed many people with them, but I don't want to bore your audience. Yeah. I can. No, no, no. These are these are no. These are really interesting. And here, obviously, uh, yeah, CBD franchise. Well, we have uh, here in California. I think the fastest growing retail sector here is weed. So, <laughs> and and very high end, uh, very fancy looking buildings and everything going up. So it's it, it's quite interesting. Um, I guess the other thing too is. Um, you know, sometimes people kind of maybe go in with unrealistic expectations, how much they're going to earn and how, you know, quickly they're going to earn and what they, what is, what is it like? If you look at this as a proper investment strategy, what, what would you advise, you know, how you can sort of set expectations correctly? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, I've always advised my clients to work closely with the franchises to get an idea. It's in their franchise disclosure document, as you well know from your mm -hmm. past experience. Experience, all franchises must divulge to yep. prospective candidates a document called the franchise disclosure document. Um, that reveals every detail about that franchise, including line item operating expenses. And those that have been around for at least X amount of years reveals what's called an item 19. Uh, might as well be called a paragraph, but it reveals the revenue sales mm. that other current owners are doing and they reveal it to you in quartile what the top performers are doing the next level performers people that aren't doing so well so i tell people utilize the information you're provided and make yourself an own pro forma if i'm doing great this is what the number is going to look like if i'm middle of the pack and and that's going to reveal give you a snapshot a picture of what your business could look like if you work hard, when people tell me what's my guarantees, I tell them zero. Well, what do you mean? Well, if you go back to your market after you've been trained and you follow the process and you work smart and hard, you have a much better chance of succeeding than if you open up your own business from scratch. But mm -hmm. you've got a budget. You've got to work hard. You've got to work smart. Um, and there are a lot of people in franchise ownership that make a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, no. absolutely. And I think the other thing too is is your comfort level with the franchise or uh, because it is like a bit of a marriage, isn't it? Like uh, when you're franchise or and franchisee. As I said back in the New Horizons days, I saw one you know some franchise really tight relationships with the franchise or very positive ones. Others a little more hands off. Some of them even adversarial, which I never really understood. But that's. Uh, that's another story, but, but I guess your relation, you, you need to find a, a franchise or that, that fits with you, that you think you can, you can work well with, that you can really um, collaborate with. I, I think that's really, really important. That's an actual, an excellent point, John. I often tell my clients that you're investing in a pseudo partnership. And if you look mm -hmm. at it that way, they are there to support you so that you can succeed, not out of the kindness of their heart, <laughs> But as you well know, if a franchisee succeeds, that means part of the operating cost of that franchisee is just something called a royalty that yep. they must pay the franchisor based on sales. So what does the franchisor want? They desperately want for you to do as much business as possible. 
The more business you do, the bigger royalty checks they get. So there's a symbiotic relationship there. Um, but you're right. I, I just had a client that was really excited about investing in a franchise. And let's just say that the relationship between her and the franchisor was not good from the get-go. And the franchisor rescinded her license, the award of her mm. territory. Obviously, she got very upset, but it's a partnership. It's like a marriage. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go in it expecting a good result and, and a an open, honest, good, solid relationship. So I, I always tell my clients, they are there to help you succeed. If you turn it into an adversarial relationship, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, and I can say, like I said, from experience that, uh, yeah, that um, it was interesting the different approaches of the of the franchisees uh, towards the franchisor, um, and therefore, yeah, I would recommend that you would definitely figure out if this is if if it's the right fit from both sides because you don't want the uh, experience that your client you know had where they rescinded the rescinded the the franchise uh, agreement um so what's your last piece of advice would you give eddie to people who are maybe considering getting into franchising yeah i i always tell people to keep an open mind and to i i, I tell them to do it old school no digital get a legal pet out and write down what you want out of your life. I have on my whiteboard in my office, I'm looking at it right now, try to find somebody their best next life today. Mm -hmm. So I tell clients, what do you want out of life next? Write down pros and cons, what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and focus on that. Don't just focus on one thing. Focus on what business can bring you the life that you want? What kind of money you want to make? Do you want to be a semi-passive owner? Do you want to be an owner operator? What sector is going to get you excited? I've created and built four businesses in my lifetime. I swear to you, the most important part of succeeding in a business is how excited you get when you wake up in the morning to go to work. If mm -hmm. you're not and you're just crunching numbers to see what business might make you the money, that's not gonna work because you have to be excited about building your business. Um, so my best advice, keep an open mind, focus on your goals, short and long-term lifestyle, financial. Do you want a legacy business for your kids, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and then if you work with a certified franchise expert, me or otherwise, there are very good ones out there, be open-minded. If they do their job properly, they're going to introduce you to some good options. Yeah, no, I think that's fantastic. And I would uh, I would absolutely encourage uh, people to work with uh, people like Eddie. Um, because as we've heard from even this short uh, conversation, there are so many different types of, of franchises out there, so many different types of opportunities. Um, but if you work with somebody like Eddie, it can make sure that you you are matched with the right one. And, and hopefully you build a, build a great business, whatever that means to you. Well, listen, Eddie, all of Eddie's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I built a number of businesses. I started my first one when I was 29 years old. As you can see from my gray hair, I'm 66 years young nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, I love being my own boss. I like being in charge of my own destiny. I like building equity. I like financial freedom, but also personal freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to take Friday off to go to the beach with my wife, I don't want to have to answer to a boss to take Friday off. And those are all the reasons for people to consider ownership. Um, so what I do is I try to help people explore their best life options uh, via business ownership with franchising. And my best advice is keep an open mind. Don't mm -hmm. like, don't get narrow minded. It won't serve you well. Yeah, absolutely. Great piece of advice. Uh, thanks, Eddie. Thank you for watching and listening. And I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you.